Hey, what's up? It's Bon. Let's talk about Mass Effect. Today, I'm going to be talking about the next Mass Effect by talking about Andromeda. So if you want to hear what I have to say about that, stick around. But first, if you like Mass Effect, please subscribe to this channel. I'm making multiple videos a week. I stream as well over on Twitch, but you can come here, get my speculation, get my news, get my ideas about the next game. And best of all, you can give me your thoughts on all of that stuff because that conversation is all we have to do while we wait three years for the next game. So subscribe, like this video, comment down below with what you think of the video, and uh, we'll hang out, we'll have a chat. So today I wanted to talk about Andromeda, and I wanted to talk about the next game through Andromeda. And Andromeda catches a lot of crap, um, justifiably for the most part in my opinion. Uh, my my take on Andromeda has actually changed a lot. The first time I played it, I didn't care for it. The second time I did, I actually liked it quite a bit. And then I tried to do a third playthrough and quit about a third of the way through. I, I just, I've gotten what I can get from Andromeda and I'm okay with that. But instead of dogging on it, I want to talk about a bunch of things about Andromeda that actually had me um, more excited for the next game after playing it a couple times. So the, the first big thing is all I could think about was when I was running uh, around the Hyperion in the Nexus, which is the main hub of the game, um, is just how cool it would be to get that on the Citadel again, to get that on a hub location on Earth, a hub location on Rannoch, a hub location, um, you know, on, a, on one of the uh, space stations. You know, we, we, we see some of these things, but we rarely got to spend time there other than the Citadel, which we got to uh, have a, as a hub in all three games uh, of the trilogy. But I have a lot of gripes with the way that they actually did the Hyperion and the Nexus and stuff, uh, a lot of fetch quests and stuff like that. It, 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 it was just not great, but I don't... What I liked was the general idea of having um, very much a Mass Effect 1 Citadel experience again, just obviously in higher fidelity. Now, I'm not going to defend the merits of Andromeda's graphics and, and stuff, you know, five years later, six years later almost. But... You know, much of Andromeda, and I think what you'll find is many of the things I'm going to talk about that I want from Andromeda in the next game um, are the parts of Andromeda that we're obviously trying to call back to Mass Effect 1. Um, if you really take a step back and look at Andromeda, they were trying to kind of recreate that Mass Effect 1 feel, um, you know, and, and how successful they were or weren't, I would say is kind of uh, your own opinion, and that's okay. So yeah, the, but the open, the the the, the hub areas, I, I think would be really great to have again. In Mass Effect 1, you had the Citadel, which was pretty large. Uh, in, in today's standard, fairly empty, but at, at that time, it was pretty good. Um, you also had, you know, multiple planets you went to, um, like Pharos, um, and, and, and was it, I think Vermeer, and a few others you were able to go back. So after you completed all of the, the Geth missions um, on Pharos, you could go back and you could revisit vendors and you could talk to people again. And there was even uh, in Novaria, not, uh, not Vermeer. Um, like Novaria, I only learned on my last playthrough, which is my like 12 or 13th, uh, that you can go back to, Ver uh, to Novaria and actually um, you know, do, do a bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of stuff that happens after you complete the, the main missions um, with, with Benezia and stuff. So I, I want more hubs again. In Mass Effect 2, um, we had a few hubs. We had the Citadel again, albeit a very, very uh, muted version of, of the Citadel compared to 1. We also had... Uh, what, what was a Tuchanka um, or one of you know the the Krogan planet, uh, as well as um, a few other places, but it just wasn't quite the same. And then in three, I believe we literally had 
the, Citadel, the Citadel, Citadel. Now we also kind of had, and it was still on the Citadel, but the um, you know the the party area for the Citadel DLC, um, but that doesn't really count because it's still basically the same. So, um, I just I, I really am excited to see them be able to hopefully, especially the Citadel, recreate it in its full glory in Unreal Engine Five, and us be able to walk around this pretty large space uh, that's fairly diverse. Uh, with the power of this new engine and the new consoles and stuff like that. Um, the last thing I'll talk about, you know, if you think about it, it, it makes sense that everything got more reduced because you have to remember that Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 were all released on the same console generation. And so the large areas but low fidelity of 1 evolved into the high fidelity but smaller areas of 3. And so that's why... Um, I, I'm excited to see them have another chance with that, uh, with better tech and better hardware and stuff like that. So, so hub areas, that's, that's probably my biggest one. Um, I also had uh, more nuanced conversations. Um, now, now, I'm not saying I actually really liked the conversation of Andromeda that much. Um, I especially didn't like the dialogue, but I appreciated that there were, it was like emotional responses where you could respond in like a flirty way or a friendship way or a positive way or a negative way or sarcastic or inquisitive or I think it was like scientific or, or whatever. Where in the trilogy, it was it was less nuanced. It was it was do the Paragon response, the Renegade response or, or the neutral response, right? Um, now with that, I would actually like to have more of the Andromeda style conversation wheel in the way that you responded but i would also like a background paragon renegade system i wouldn't want it to be so obvious uh, maybe with the quick times and, and and the interrupts and stuff maybe bring those back but i don't want it to just straight up say this is the paragon choice this is the renegade because that opens up at least a, that opens up some variability maybe you could have five choices to respond to someone and hidden behind the system, one of them is very Paragon. One of them is slightly Paragon, slightly Renegade, very Renegade, and then a neutral. But they don't make it so obvious. So it allows a maybe more subtle Paragon Renegade system to hang in the background and not be so obvious that like, yeah, you just hit the blue one every single time and you'll be Paragon. Instead, it would be kind of cool, especially in the first playthrough or two, to have a situation where you have to kind of figure out oh that's that was actually the paragon choice and I, I picked that wrong because of things that happen later that makes sense um to have some of that variability i think would be really cool so that's a big one i would really like to see a system similar to andromeda's conversation system but to have a paragon renegade system kind of uh, happening in the background uh to, to affect things later on but that's just me um, squad interactions, this one's fairly simple. Um, we, we had this in the Mass Effect games, in the trilogy, um, and in 2 and 3, they're, they're, they start to have a little more. But Andromeda does do a good job of, and, and I guess what I'm specifically talking about is uh, in, in the Nomad, when you're driving around and they're they're bantering in the car. A lot of those conversations are legitimately like funny or heartening or whatever. Um, I will also say that even on um, the, the the ship, you, even on uh, your your kind of main ship, you do run into individuals having, you know, they they, get, they repeat eventually if you don't progress the story. But you are having some fairly unique interactions on their own that don't involve you at all. Um, so much of the trilogy, like everything, is about Shepard, Shepard, Shepard. And I will say in Andromeda, they do a good job of at least attempting to make it feel like. These characters have their own agency and stuff like that. They, I, I would like to take that uh, take that further in the next game to make it really feel like it. But they at least made the the attempt in Andromeda, and I would like to see more of that. Um, a really simple one that sounds really dumb but meant a lot to me was in Andromeda when you travel to a new planet or to a star system or something. You can get you know you can walk around the ship. And you can look out the windows and see that planet or see that space, you know, um, you know, the, the, the base or moon or sun or whatever you've parked beside 
Um, and it's really cool. And that's something I really, really, really hope they, um, they, they bring back uh, because that was just very cool. It'd be cool to pull up to Earth, to pull up to Thessia, to pull up to Palavin and these plants that we know of and see them from the ship and not just in a menu screen like we uh, in, the, in the, the galaxy map and stuff like we saw uh, in the trilogy. I would also like to see um, open world areas again. Now, this comes with a huge caveat the way that they did the open world in Andromeda, I get what they were trying to do. And if you ever uh, watch or listen to the documentaries about what their original goal was for Andromeda was to have a basically like a no man's sky procedural generation type thing where you could explore like hundreds of planets, but that got pared down to like a handful. Um, they're too spread out and they're too empty in Andromeda. Um, I don't want, I, I want a more linear game from the next Mass Effect, but I do hope they have some of these maybe smaller open world areas and maybe more of them. Um, maybe, you know, a little more bang for your buck and, um, and to have, to, to have the opportunity to organically discover some side missions, to do some environmental storytelling, like, you know, maybe not go full linear mission style, like Mass Effect 3, but maybe not go full open world, way too big, empty, kind of really not fun to have to drive around all the time uh, from Andromeda. I think a balance in the middle would be very important. Um, the, the, the new, um, new places and species is a big one. So Andromeda, uh, I pretty famously, at least among people who, who listen to me, um, really don't like the Angaran. I, I think that they're one of the ugliest alien species I've ever seen in a game. And I don't think they're meant to be like the cat are supposed to be ugly. Like I get that and they look fine, I guess they're just so generic, but the Angaran, it's just most of the species in Mass Effect felt fairly grounded like you looked at them and they looked like they made sense like yeah i can imagine a planet where that creature evolved and and became what it is where the angaran just like they're just like weird like lizard cat cobra things i don't their their, their bodies don't make sense their proportions don't make sense where when you see the other creatures, like they, they, they do at least a little more so. Like you look at a Turian or a Quarian, because they all have the similar kind of leg feet situation. And I feel like they just, they, they, they look like they make sense. Where you look at the Angarans and they're just so top heavy. And they have these little dinky skinny legs. And they're just oddly built. Not a big fan of that. So there's, there's my rant, in case you haven't heard it before. But I do want more species. One of my biggest failings with Andromeda is we went to an entirely new galaxy and we met two new species and there's even a asterisk in there. I won't spoil it if you haven't played it, but there's, you know, it's not as uh, clear cut as you think. And then a bunch of like animals that you just kill, like, you know, so they don't, I don't really count those, you know, like, like Mass Effect went to a new galaxy and gave us two new species to interact with. Like, I'm sure they planned on more. I believe I've seen concept art of that there were a lot more. Um, and, and they had to pair that back for many of the reasons that Andromeda has suffered in general. But I, I really want, and, and, I, and I've seen people say like, well, I hope this game isn't in the Milky Way and stuff like that. The Milky Way, I believe there's even a codex entry that says that the current, you know, Citadel species have explored like 2% of the galaxy. And, and a big part of that is because there's the rule with the Citadel not to activate relays. So it started the war between the humans and the Turians when the humans activated a relay um, unauthorized because they didn't know there was a Citadel or, or aliens at all. But what I think would be really cool is if in the aftermath of Mass Effect 3, if for whatever reason, whether it be for resources or research or manpower or whatever, that they decide, you know what, let's open up some relays and let's do a little exploration. And via that, we get to meet, you know, maybe three or four new species 
of of uh, of aliens and stuff like that. Um, and we already know about some, like the Ralloy and stuff like that, that used to be involved in Citadel space and then booked it when the Reapers were coming. So I, I really want that. And then new places, obviously. I would... I would like to see us, you know, visit planets that we've heard about but never actually gotten to see. Uh, it'd be really cool to go on Palavin. Um, it would be really cool to see what Rannoch looks like if it's starting to be rebuilt into a, a Quarian world again. Um, it'd be really interesting to see what Thessia looks like in Earth after it's rebuilding. Um, it'd be interesting to see what Tuchanka looks like if the Genophage has been cured and they're starting to rebuild their society. Um, and then places I haven't even mentioned a bunch of them so I, I really hope you know new places new species uh, no matter when the game takes place no matter where will be a big priority and the protagonist so this is one that's actually confusing for me to to explain um i want shepherd for one more game uh, i've really made that pretty clear um but i don't think that's a guarantee and depending on what the next game is like it probably isn't even the best decision so I don't hate the idea of like a blank protagonist or a new protagonist to take the game forward. It's just Ryder wasn't it. What they, what they tried to do with the Ryder twins, I get it. I understand it. I've heard Mark Dara talk about the CW thing that they were trying to bring in a younger crowd. Um, and that's going to be the case again. I've talked about this before. Uh, you know, the, the, the trilogy fans are like me. They're in their 30s. They're in their 40s. And... We still buy games, but we aren't going to be the target market, at least not entirely. Even fans of Andromeda, uh, you know, five, six years later now, if they were in their 20s, they're getting to their 30s. And so they may not necessarily be the target either. And so you have to keep in mind that this next game is probably going to be trying to target people in their late teens and 20s. Uh, which are probably going to be mostly new to the Mass Effect IP. Maybe the legendary edition pulled some in maybe they played andromeda but for the most part this is gonna be a fresh uh demographic to go after and so you know you'll have them as a huge focus you'll have andromeda fans as some focus and you'll have trilogy fans it's probably a bigger focus than you think purely off nostalgia and kind of trying to make up for andromeda but i really i've, I've really debated and i'm still not sure I think Shepard can be a protagonist to bring everyone into the same boat. I also wouldn't be surprised if they decide, let's go with someone fresh, let's go with a fresh N7 recruit that just graduated from the school and is getting put with Liara to Sony uh, to be her guard or something. I And we'll play as that person or to command an alliance ship um, that will assist you know Liara or whoever we end up interacting with in the game. Um, I'm okay with a new protagonist. I just, I hope that they, um, I'm okay if they try to go more modern and more emotional and stuff, uh, more complicated than Shepard, but maybe don't go so far down the hole of CW fine, um, the, the protagonist like they did with the Ryder twins. So I can live with it. I want Shepard, but I'll deal with a new one if they do it better than they did before. So those are my main things. Um, I, I, I could also talk about the things I don't want to see again. Um, but what's the point? We, we know what a lot of people don't like about Andromeda. I, I think my final point is just that I really hope Andromeda is a, a lesson, is a, um, is a warning about what not to do. Um, instead of inspiration for the next game. I really hope the trilogy is the inspiration for the next game with the lessons learned from Andromeda, the lessons learned from the trilogy, if we're going to be honest. And I just really hope that we see um, them kind of get back to the roots. Don't forget the lessons they've learned and to try to push the entire franchise forward a bit because even Andromeda is old in game in in gaming years right so there's a lot of modern day um things that they can implement to make the franchise feel more up to date and hopefully they'll even try to push the push the push the envelope a little bit to not just be safe um i, I said in the previous video i hope they're bold and i hope they take risks with this next game i just also hope 
they try to stick with what they know will work if you can really do that so there it is that's why i have um let me know what you think down in the comments uh, about all of this what things from andromeda do you want maybe you can tell me what you don't want from andromeda what things from the trilogy would you like to see again just in the general game feel mechanics things like that um, if you like the video, please hit the like button down below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this, if you want more Mass Effect videos. I also talk about other games, so you can follow or subscribe for that as well. Um, I am Bond Diesel on most social media places, especially on, over on Twitch. And on Twitter is where I spend a lot of my time. Uh, and last, you can listen to my podcast called The Echo Cast. It's a weekly gaming podcast. Uh, you can uh, check it out here on YouTube or on any podcast platform. I also do some interviews. I've had Mark Dara. I've had Mr. Holthen as well as some other people. Uh, and last, if you want to support this uh, channel, if you want to support my other content, you can check out patreon.com slash bond diesel. Uh, and for one, five or $10 uh, membership fees, you can uh, get a bunch of exclusive stuff, including ad free podcast. So that's all I have for this one until next time.